Hello, this is Shane, and we're going to do a SEP install on a Windows server. We're going to install the basic server software, and we have to start by installing Java. So let's go get Java. And install that so that we have Java available for the GUI. And then we can turn around and do the install of the software. I don't have anything else installed on this server. It is a basic server, clean server, so the only thing you will have to have available on it is Java. You need to have DNS configured in your environment. Forward and reverse D DNS needs to be set up. And then the SEP server install is pretty quick. So let's go to the SEP site, and anybody can go download the software from SEP. It is free of charge to do a 30 day trial. Just come in and create a new account. After you create a new account, you'll be able to download a 30 day trial and test it as much as you want. We're going to go ahead and just do the server. You can download the client or the GUI independently so you don't have to download the entire server software and if you look the server itself 54 meg the GUI is 40 meg the client is much much smaller at only 16 meg so they're all pretty quick to download and install while this is installing <clears throat> the other thing we need to make sure is that our firewall is turned off firewall after the software has been installed and can't install. That's fine, so it's definitely off. After the product's been installed, you can go ahead and turn on the firewall. There's just a few ports you need to open. Those are readily available in the sepusa.com documentation section, and you can get that information to turn back on your firewall and open that up. Documentation. And let's go ahead and close this and you can see all the available pieces on the documentation that you can grab and you can get those ports, add those it'll also, those are the same ports it's going to use if you're moving across firewalls to get to different areas of your network so let's go ahead and go into our di documents and launch the install double click on the install, we'll run it it will extract the install to begin with. Let's install in English, confirm the license, and we're going to do the server, which will include the client and GUI. It, default directory is program files. You can put that somewhere else if you want. And then I'm not going to put anything on the desktop, and I will put it in the SysTray, and we'll let it go ahead and install a small database. That database is where it's going to keep track of schedules, clients, all the information it has. It's going to install the software itself. It'll then turn around and actually set up a schedule for its own internal database and configuration to get backed up on a daily basis. It will configure a data store so it has an area, small area, that it can back up the information that it has and it's going to go ahead and run a backup of that information so it'll actually have a test backup run onto the data store with its current information so when we're done we will actually have a test backup already run we'll be able to look at the status of it and make sure it's working well the data store is working the server is responding everything's there it goes ahead and launches the GUI for us automatically, tells us that a restore is complete and that the backup completed successfully. So let's just do a quick look at the config and see what it's set up. If we look at our clients, it creates a local group. This is a location for the local server we just installed, and the server is there. It did set up the jobs. You can see by the green status here that this one ran, ran successfully. If we go and look at the job state, we see that it was successful. Everything worked well. 
So the initial install worked. We're ready to set up additional clients and get the backup schedules going. Thank you for joining us.